Cyberpunk is amazing. Cyberpunk 2077, well, I had a bit of a rough start. And Cyberpunk Edge Runners is one of the best series I've watched in recent memory. It's a heart-pounding 10-episode series that argues CD Red Project may very well have something special on their hands. Do not sleep on this anime, bro. This is the anime I didn't know I needed. If you don't know, Cyberpunk is the brainchild of this guy, Mike Pondsmith, but it's come a long way from its TTRPG origins. Video game studio CD Red Project, the same studio responsible for giving us The Witchers, announced the game Cyberpunk 2077 in May 2012. A stringent development period led to a rocky release, and fast forward a few years later, Cyberpunk 2077 is dead. Or was it? September 13th, 2022, Cyberpunk Edge Runners comes crashing into our hearts. A Netflix original anime that blew everyone's mind simply because of how good it was. It's going an 8.5 on IMDb, 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, and an 8.7 on My Animals. Now, first off, you don't even need to like Cyberpunk 2077 to enjoy the anime. Secondly, if you love Cyberpunk, then you'll already love this anime. It's a spin-off from the game, so while there's a bunch of locations that are the same, the characters and story are completely their own thing, I personally think therein lies its brilliance, because without being forced to fit a pre-existing narrative, Edge Runners is free to be its own thing. It can do whatever it wants to its characters, and it won't change the overarching story, or you know what's already kind of built upon in Cyberpunk. This isn't some prequel in which certain events must be proven true in order to fit said story. Its originality is unmatched, yet its familiarity is never lost. The series is rich, from the jargon to the locales, the lore, and easter eggs. I mean, come on, they have so much history and world building to draw from. The characters are likable, and honestly, they, they, that, that's a breath of fresh air, because if you're an empathetic person, you're going to feel bad when David, the main character, is hurt, or as you watch Maine slow descent into cyberkosis, or when Rebecca gets clobbered by that Adam Smasher, you can fight him in the game if you're interested, just letting you know if you want to you know, help me out or something. The point is... I felt like I really got to see the characters develop, and I genuinely fell for them. Which is interesting, because they don't even have backstories, yet you still can understand the character, and you still can see their motivations to, a do- to an extent, to a degree. You can, you can really like the characters. For a 10-episode series, it gave you a surprisingly large amount of emotional attachment. The point is, I basically you know i fell for them it wasn't just some sob story after sob story bidding for my affections i care the writers made us care i think it goes without saying that studio trigger put real effort into visually making it shine like the color palettes were my biggest takeaways i love how everything in the art direction had meaning or was a subtle callback to something else it all felt very surreal i suppose studio trigger is the same studio behind darling in the franks sss gridman kill that kill and a bunch of others the story, though, the story's thick. It's heavy. I would have personally wanted some more time to flesh out like some of the interpersonal relationships, but maybe that's just me wishing there was more to this series, because for a 10-episode series, it's such an emotional ride. A story that's set in a dystopia riddled with corruption and cybernetic implants. Having everything to lose, our main character, David Martinez, chooses to stay alive by becoming an edge runner, a mercenary outlaw, also known as a cyberpunk. But boy, it is so much more than we expected. The duality of man and machine, the loss of innocence, more than anything else, cyberpunk stays true to its emotional core. Just as like the Witcher may be you know, battling interdimensional beings, surrounded by empires at war, it never strays from its heart, because at heart, it's a story of a man searching for his daughter, so it kind of fits. Edge Runners is a story like that. It doesn't forget what it's about. Finding comfort in kindred spirits is the world around you once you're dead. You know, Night City is in a nice place. The happiness that David and Lucy gave each other is what makes this story so special. Like Lucy said to David about Night City, it, it does indeed look like a prison from here, a cage of light. These words ring true all throughout the rising action. The same cool, shiny toys we love, you know, all that chrome. In a way, it's not freeing you, it's trapping you. And I could see a lot of uh, similes and metaphors that were really kind of tying the whole theme of cyberpunk, and which is why I really love this subgenre. You know, you're stuck on these meds, you're trembling, you're losing yourself. It's a double-edged sword, the same thing that gives you these cool abilities and all these different powers to make change and do, you know, all these cool things, is at the same time subtly what's killing you. You know, it's kind of like a poison. 
What makes it so tragic is that's by design. Night City, the, you know, the corporations, they're all designed to snuff out dreams. Sadly, it's a cruel world, and in this world, it's not how you live, but how you die. And I think that sums up pretty much kind of how this show ended. I started to expect it at a point, but nothing could have prepared me for the emotional impact of what I watched during those last few episodes. When Maine dies a little earlier in the series, I was sad, but kind of prepared. It was a thematic passing of the torch that allowed David to take command and learn to lead. The death of Rebecca, however, was a giant punch in the gut. It was then that my suspicions for how this would all end were confirmed, and what I think hurt most was the fact that I wanted to know her more. Same with David. I wanted to spend more time in that universe with those characters, and I felt like our time had been cut too soon. Even if this series gets a sequel of some sort, these characters are pretty much gone for good, and it should stay that way. Still, it felt too soon. Maybe that was intentional. Maybe in that, the death subtly became more real, because, I mean, whoever thinks they had enough time with someone who's passed, it's always too soon. This kind of leads to the final point, because normally, I would hate an ending in which the hero dies and the villains are still around. Like, come on. Over the days since completing it, I've been asking myself, why do I still like the ending so much? I mean, it irks me a little. Am I mad at the people that still got away unharmed? Yeah, yeah, best bet. But at the same time, I think I've learned to appreciate the story we were given for what it was. This was a small part of a much larger world. This was one man's story amongst many. And maybe the enemies weren't defeated. It's okay. That wasn't their job. Maybe it's yours. And I hope they capitalize on this. The cross-media potential in a series like this is unparalleled. From being a tabletop RPG experience to a AAA game. I just recently heard about them doing a novel of some sort and anime. And there's so many different things that are going on. And really what separates this, in my opinion, from certain series like The Witcher, which also has a book and also has games and a TV show and a bunch of things going on, is that... This is all sort of happening at the same time, so it's allowed to tell its narrative all together and mix. When you're doing、um, a book and then you're making a movie of it and then you're making a game of it, you know, you're basically telling somewhat the same story. When you are making an anime alongside a game, alongside a book, alongside multiple forms of media, it can tell a much wider story. Things that one version. Things that the game maybe couldn't explain to you, things that the anime couldn't exactly convey. So, I am personally excited to see the future of this project and how it can evolve from here. This was CDPR's second chance, and I have high hopes as to what the future holds. This anime moved me deeply, and it's had such a major impact on me personally. So, thanks, I guess. Eventually, I'll find the right words to describe moments like this, but until then, there's a lot to do. Hey, get out of here. I'm not crying. You're crying. You're crying. You're crying.